Mitch and I just got back from Japan and Korea. It was amazing and we also got to experience the amazing wonder that is flight. And when we arrived back home, we felt like death. Yeah, we became extremely exhausted, unmotivated, had weird eating habits and waking up at totally random times. It's what the kids are calling jet lag these days. I don't know, but we had it. So it got us thinking, what is the science behind jet lag and what are some tips to overcoming and beating this awful feeling? So jet lag is actually a disruption with our internal clock that helps us to anticipate dusk and dawn. These biological clocks help control blood pressure, stress, appetite, and more. So it makes sense. You mess with the clocks, you mess with your life. So tip number one is preparation. You can ease yourself into a new time zone by consciously manipulating your exposure to light. Yes, Queen of Light, prepare me for my trip. Your body can feel extra exhausted when it's forced to completely adapt to a new light schedule. So if you're traveling east, for example, your body will feel like it's getting darker earlier. And a way you can prepare for this is by leaving the light outside earlier in your day. So say it's 5 p.m., it's still bright outside, but you should go inside, indoors, get away from the light, so your body's trying to sync up with the light schedule of where you'll end up. If you're doing the opposite and traveling to the west, then you want to stay up later and expose yourself to outdoor light as long as possible. If you find this confusing, don't worry, there's actually an app called Entrain which uses math and algorithms to help reduce your jet lag by mobile tracking. Tip number two, prepare with a portable light box. You can gradually readjust your rhythms prior to a trip by using a portable light box which actually simulates sunlight. What time is it? I prepare with a light box so I'm gonna have the best day ever, run some marathons, solve some world issues, and just be awesome. Can you get me a pizza? To prepare for a west to east trip, you can actually get up earlier and use the portable light box to simulate sunlight and help you wake up. Conversely, to handle an east to west journey, you can actually use the portable light box at night to help you stay up later and prepare you for when you arrive in your new place. This has actually worked wonders for people who like to prepare in advance and use their travel time to the fullest. Tip number three, drink lots of water. Lower oxygen and dry air on planes can actually have a negative impact to you and make your jet lag a lot worse. Experts recommend that you have two cups of water before getting on your flight and one liter of water for every hour that you're on your flight. That's a lot of water. And I know it might be hard, but you should try and avoid those temptations of alcohol and coffee on the plane because they're just really gonna dehydrate you. Oh, and here's a bonus tip. You might wanna get an aisle seat if you're drinking this much water because you're gonna have to pee a lot and it's gonna be nice and clear instead of that nasty orange juice pee that you get when you come off a plane normally. Tip number four, adjust your meals for wherever you are. If we ate breakfast every day at 8 a.m. in Toronto, then we should eat breakfast every day at 8 a.m. in Tokyo. <laughs> oh no, what time is it even? I'm not even hungry what I have to eat. <laughs> Research in mice has found that eating directly affects insulin levels, and these insulin levels directly affect your body's timekeeping. Eating meals synced to the time zone you are in will help your body adjust. The same goes for exercise. Assuming that most people work out or do exercise during the day, you should exercise during the day as well in whatever time zone you are in. Tip number five is taking appropriate naps. Daytime naps to get you through a jet lagged day are okay if you can keep it under 30 minutes. <laughs> I, I, I woke up today. Feeling. These naps help you to avoid sleep inertia, which is that crabby feeling you get when you wake up out of deep sleep. But they also help to ensure that you're still tired at nighttime so you can get the amount of sleep that you need. Tip number six may be something that's available to us in the future. Researchers have found that mice that lack the receptor for arginine vasopressin are actually much better at dealing with jet lag and time shifts. This is obviously very exciting news because some sort of jet lag cure would be great for us in the future, but unfortunately it is much more complicated than that and we are still a ways to go before we actually get a little, that was a pill, <laughs> pill pop to get rid of jet lag. <laughs> so in the meantime, we're just gonna have to enjoy the miracle that is flight and the amazing salty food, the potential Wi-Fi so you can like watch YouTube on it, the fact that the stewardesses and stewardess men are all extremely nice, that the bathroom is really scary and every time you flush like the most powerful flush in the world, it sounds like a gunshot, like that. And what else is great about flight? Um, Trevor Lance, woo, yeah. <laughs> we hope these tips have been useful for you next time you're down and out and trying to adjust to a new time zone. And let us know if you have any other ideas or remedies to beat that jet lag. And any of the best ones we're gonna tweet out on Twitter. Make sure to follow us both on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe to ASAP Thought because we put out a new video every Wednesday and an ASAP vlog every Saturday that you can watch. And uh, that's actually the next time we'll see you. So, peace. <laughs>
And we really yeah. <laughs> we really yeah. <laughs>